goes beep. It's recording. It tell you it's recording because right. it, it look as it says R E C. Yeah. All right, and then it says record. Yeah, and it's running. Yeah, and when you want to stop it. Well, I've been fishing Cassian for over 30 years now and uh, it was the first place I ever went to outside of this country apart from a, a day trip to Calais with the school years ago. Um, it was the first time I'd ever looked at going abroad and the first time I ever had a reason to go really. And over the years I have accumulated you know, quite a bit of film and you know, obviously lots of photos so it'd be nice to have a look back over some of those. Yeah, 30 years later I'm still going there. It, it's hard to explain to people now what it was like going abroad back then. Um, there simply wasn't uh, the knowledge about France in general. Cassin was actually the first lake that anyone knew about in France. And so it was, it was making it up as we went along really. We, we had no idea, there was no people to get in touch with, there was no internet or anything like that. Literally I had my old Mark III Cortina I had a map and I could see a little bit of blue that was Cassian down there and then it was just up to me to try and find my way there which it took quite a while but um, it was a big adventure and, and it's hard to get across just what an adventure it was you know these days everyone goes to France but in those days it just didn't happen you know that was literally the start of it all so yeah it was it was exciting and a bit nerve-wracking to actually do it but you know, I did it, I wanted to do it. I saw those pictures from people like Rod Hutchinson and Kevin Ellis, he caught that massive great 76 pound mirror. And it, it was more than that, I saw the pictures of the lake and it looked so beautiful. You know, I was fishing Brooklands and Darrant in the Darrant Valley, muddy places with loads of rats. And uh, here was a lake with sandy beaches, sunshine, blue water and big carp. You know, it all looked in a way too good to be true, but you know, it, it just, I looked at those pictures and I wanted to be a part of that. So sure enough, loaded up my car, off I went and, and made it down to the lake. You know, honestly, I thought it was gonna be my only trip. I wanted to go there, have the experience, say that I'd been there and carry on with my normal fishing. Well, little did I know, when I got there, I just fell in love with the place straight away. It was, it was sort of like paradise really, you know, sitting on a sandy beach with the blue water in front of us, loads of big unknown carp. Um, yeah, and it was like a dream come true. And I actually caught my first Cassian carp on the very first night on there. Uh, and, you know, I was fishing nights in those days. You weren't allowed to in those days, but, you know, we did sneak a few nights here and there. That, that first night, I actually had three runs. Uh, the first one, I, I struck into thin air, just nothing there, screaming run. Uh, the second one I lost in the snag and the third one I landed which was a 22 pound mirror. So that was my very first carp, Cassian carp and first carp outside of England. But it went on from there. Um, it wasn't easy but over the trip I think I caught, I think I landed nine and I lost six. Um, and I, I broke my PB twice on that trip. I had a 39 mirror and I also caught the first 40 which was 43 pound. Um, it was the first 40 pounder that I'd ever seen on the bank. You know, the biggest until that time had been 30 pound at Darrant Flakes. And so a 43 in those days was, was huge. And I can remember as I was taking the pictures, looking down on its back and thinking how wide it was. You know, it's, I'd never seen a fish that wide before. Yeah, it was just fantastic memories. 
you know, I knew from the moment I got there that I was going to have to go back and little did I know that it'd be, well, to this day, 31 years and, and still going. Well, in 1994 it was, uh, something changed on Cassian that they opened up night fishing for the first time. So that meant that we could actually fish effectively in winter. We could actually bivvy up and fish properly through winter. So I started going on the first of the Christmas trips. Uh, now it was in 1996, I think it was, when I actually borrowed a camera for the first time, a video camera. and. Uh, I don't know what made me do it, it was, it was a guy I used to work with, Paul Sanders, Glum we used to call him, and I borrowed his video camera. And it, I thought it'd just be nice to sort of document what we did and, you know, because it was it was quite a, a special trip, that one, uh, the Christmas trip, you know, because of, we were there at Christmas and because it was a long session. It was the first time that we'd actually stayed put in one swim for a really long period of time. We were there for four weeks, actually. we stayed on the second point for that whole time. So it's really nice to sort of document everything, all the changes that went on through that trip. Um, I caught fish fairly steadily all the way through. You know, I started off with a couple of 30s. The weather was all nice, it was nice and sunny. And then it, I think it got to Christmas Day and it was a particularly really nice day. I mean, I remember waking up and there were fish showing all around us. It was a beautiful morning and sure enough, a rod went off. Uh, and it wasn't a big fish, it was a 25 pound common. But it was my first ever Christmas Day carp. So, you know, a special moment in time. And after that, you know, typically shows how a winter Cassian session could change really quickly because we had a, a week where it snowed constantly, the temperatures really dropped, um, it got harder. I caught one while there was still some snow on the ground. And then actually after that, we had the rain. During those rains, caught one really nice mirror that was just over 45 pound. In those days, the aim for a trip was always to get 140. If I could get 140, it was a really good trip. Uh, they were all nice trips, but 40 made it special. And I got that 45 in the rain, so it was a, it was a great trip, and that was the icing on the cake. And then it rained constantly, and the lake actually filled up to beyond its full level and it, it was the first time I think I'd seen the water come up that quick. It actually come up three foot overnight and all my rods were in the lake the next day and everything. It, it was actually really nice to look back on all this footage because I hadn't seen it myself for so many years. And you know, they're special memories. Cassian trips are always special, but over the years, you know, I look back on those early trips and, and the early trips to any lake are always special so you know it's lovely to see all of this footage again myself and to relive some of those memories you know they were, they were great times and uh, you know I was so pleased that we just made the effort to go all the way down there to the south of France in the winter time and experience what it had to offer at Christmas because it was brilliant. Ever since I started fishing there, there were always big fish that I wanted to catch or special fish um, for their looks or scale patterns or whatever. And there, there was certainly uh, plenty that I wanted to catch. I didn't catch them all, but there was a few. Um, there was certainly one big linear in there. Um, and around that time, 
when I actually caught it. There, there were two big linears. There was one called Matey, and the other one didn't really have a name, Matey's Mate. <laughs> um, but I did manage to catch that one. And I, I do remember it being up the North Farm in a boat, playing this fish, and the fights in Cassie and over deep water were like legendary. You could be out in a boat just plodding around for ages. But as the water was so clear, you'd get to a certain point, you'd look over the side and you'd see the fish down there. And I just remember looking down and as it turned, I saw this big row of scales and I thought, oh, it's one of them too. Sure enough, you know, it was matey's mate. Yeah, on the bank, I mean, it was a big, long grey mirror with scales all down its flank. And you, you could see it had some age to it. It wasn't a young fish, it was an old character, but it was just one of the old Cassian characters. That's what made it so special. There were, all through the years, there's been those fish that are unique to Cassian and they're special character fish. Uh, and that was one of them. You know what I mean? There are moments in time that you wouldn't change that for the world. They're, they're the moments that you, fishing Cassie and they're what you wait for. And, and that was one of them. It was just a glorious fish, an old Cassie and warrior. What a superb fish, eh? This really is what Cassie is all about. This is why I love coming here. I think I'll be as pleased as I can go home. Well, he will. That is fabulous. One of the fish that I've wanted for a long time, and I've got him. Brilliant. Goodbye, old friend. Lovely. Just look at that. Brilliant stuff. I don't catch another fish this session, it don't matter. That's made it all worthwhile. There's obviously a lot of fish in Cassie and it's a big lake, um, but there are also fish that I've doubled up on a few times, not many. Uh, the first one that I can really remember was one I actually caught on that first winter session or the first session that I filmed, which was a 22 pound mirror. And it was really distinctive because it had a, a real hump and a dent in its back. Um, so that was 96 and, I, and it was 2002 when I caught it again and uh, first of all I didn't recognise it because it had actually grown onto 45 pounds so it, it basically doubled in size. Ooh, 10, 11, 12 in the morning and that's when the big chaps like to come along. Um, but it was quite special you know you, when you see one you think oh, I remember you from you know a few years ago so that was always nice uh, and there's been a few others actually uh, on my very first winter trip in 94. Uh, I only caught two that trip and the second one was this lovely long 47 pound mirror. And that had two distinctive scales on its side actually as well. And um, it was a fish that I saw caught a few times by other people, but I banked it again myself. It was around, I suppose 2005 and you know i remember playing this fish and as it came up i thought i know you <laughs> and sure enough it, it was like meeting an old friend almost because there was quite a few years in between almost sort of must have been 10 11 years in between captures and it sort of stayed around the same size so it was an old fish and a real real beauty it's like meeting up with an old friend now i don't want to keep them out too long because give me a good fight like i say he's getting on a bit it was quite special uh, to see him again after after all that time. Uh, and yeah, you know, there was a few fish. Um, well, Timotei, the fish they called Timotei was another prime example because that was a fish, uh, I caught it in the winter of 2001, I think it was, or 2000, at 43 pound. It didn't have a name or anything then. Uh, and, and gradually it grew bigger and bigger. I caught it again at 55 pound and, and then it had a name, the French had given it the name Timothée. 
and that actually went on to be the second biggest fish that Cassian has ever produced. It, it went on to be caught uh, just over 75 pound on a couple of times. Although I didn't know at the time when I caught it how special it was going to be, you know, I look back and think, yeah, you know, it was, it was part of Cassian history, that fish. You know, people say it's not nice doubling up on fish, but sometimes it is nice to see them fish that you've seen all those years before and think, oh, you know, fancy seeing you again, you know. Just one of the things, it, it's, sometimes it's nice. Yeah, I suppose that there were several stockings on Cassian over the years, and mainly down to Gerard, who had Gerard's restaurant in the South Arm, and he was also the head of the Fishing Federation, uh, and he's retired now, sadly. Um, but he was responsible for a lot of the things that went in favour of carp fishing, and in particular a lot of the, the stockings that went in. And I, I went up and witnessed a couple of these stockings, you know, one Thankfully, I took the camcorder with me and, and filmed a lot of it. And um, what surprised me, I suppose, looking back at those films, were how small a lot of the fish were that you put in. You know, they certainly looked like catfish food, a lot of them. But um, there were some in there. I remember a, a lovely little perfect linear. Uh, and there's not many of those in Cassian. And there is one in there now that I've seen up to mid 40s. So quite likely it is that one. Yeah, thankfully, down to Gerard, you know, a lot of those carp that are in there today have come from stockings like that. Yeah, it was a, it was about 2013 and, and little did I know that the night fishing was about to be stopped. Um, Gerard, who had been head of the Fishing Federation, retired and a new guy who took over had different ideas about carp fishing and night fishing and he made it illegal to night fish on Cassian from that point onwards. So the winter trips were basically out of the window. You couldn't bivvy up on the bank, you couldn't stay on there at night. So that was to be our last time, but little did I know that Cassian did have a little present for me at the end of that. Uh, without knowing it at the time, it ended up being a really good trip. Oh, there, there, there's so many highlights in, in 31 years, do you know what I mean? You know, from, from the early days of catching my first 40 here, my first 60 pounder was here, um, so many. But I suppose, yeah, I mean, certainly one of the great highlights was my last winter session on here. Again, it was, it was a, a tough session. We'd, we'd been on here for 10 days and I'd caught a 25 pound common. I'd had one bite, 25 pound common, and was struggling to be honest, it was in the West Arm. And we decided to have a move to the North Arm, was heading for the second point, and two German guys beat us to it. And we thought, oh, you know, typical luck. <laughs> All right, we'd jump on the first point in the North. Uh, and by fate, coincidence or whatever, there was a group of big fish there. and. I had a 37 in the night and the next morning, first morning in that swim, I had a 63 and a half pound common. That was, that beat me old record of, you know, 25 years before or whatever. A few days later, I had a, a mirror of 64 and a half. I had four fifties that week as well. And it was like Cassian saying, night fishing's finishing. Here you are, have these. <laughs> you struggled enough over the years. Here's a little reward for you. You know, it sort of felt like that a bit. Uh, and yeah, it was a real highlight because we went home after that and about four weeks later, news come through, no more night fishing. So the winter, winter sessions were history. But that final week gave me the two biggest fish I'd ever had out of here. Biggest common, biggest mirror. So it was Cassie and saying, here you are, thank you very much. Yeah, the, the end of the night fishing was like the end of an era, really, for me, because those winter trips were so special. But I still wanted to fish Cassian. You know, I still love Cassian and wanted to be there. What I found with the day fishing was that it was actually a lot more relaxing and sort of sociable hours, really, than I first imagined. Um, I thought 
I'd be getting up at four o'clock in the morning and fishing right until last knockings. But I actually found that the Cassian fish in the summer tended to start feeding afternoon through to evening. So in the end, I cut out the mornings and just started getting down there midday, early afternoon. And really, I was, I was just getting there for bite time. So, you know, I'd get down there, get in a swim that I'd baited up the evening before or over a couple of days and just get the rods out in perhaps an hour in front of the feeding time. And it worked out really well. You know, I was speaking to guys that were fishing the mornings and struggling and I was getting down there in the afternoon and, and sometimes getting two or three fish in quick succession. So in actual fact, it was working out really well. Just got back to the bank, put one in the net there, and the other one just got off. There we go, 29 pound <laughs> of evening action. To be honest, we nearly never got fishing, we didn't come out till late afternoon. There we go, that's the other half of the mad half hour. 35 and a half pound of angry Cassie and Common. <laughs> so it meant changing a lot of things um, firstly the time of year that I wanted to go uh, it was no good going in the winter with short days unpredictable weather so I chose more the summertime July especially because we had lovely long days but of course it also changed completely the way I had to approach the fishing cracking old looking fish old Cassian warrior about that eh? one of the old Cassian battle warriors bit of a tatty old tail we went through a period obviously where we could night fish but now you know they've stopped that it's back to day fishing only and so that's how we've got to fish the lake and it changes the whole style of fishing you know you can't bivvy up obviously but now you've got to get down here every morning pack up every evening and go back so for that reason you have to sort of refine everything down you know the gear has to be refined down uh, and you have to travel light you only need enough bait for one day so i end up coming down here with a kilo of bait that's all you need for a day instead of turning up with 20 or 30 kilos for a session i come with a one kilo bag for a day session and really um thank god for the th you know the scopes and things like that because the scopes are perfect they go in the boat they go straight in the van at night and they make traveling around a whole lot easier because it, it's all about getting on here quick, getting set up quick, getting the rods out quick. Everything's got to be done quick, basically. And you can do it, you know, the scopes help a lot in that way. But, you know, when, when we talk about doing day sessions, they don't have to be a full day. I mean, there's guys on here that really push the boat out and, and go from start to finish. So you can be on here, say this time of year, you can be on here from six in the morning until eight at night. You can't do too many days like that. So it actually pays to try and sort out when the feeding times are and just maximise your chances on those. But a couple of guys I know were doing the mornings and they were struggling, you know, they were struggling because they weren't here at bite time, whereas we were turning up in the afternoon and nicking a fish or two. So, yeah, a lot of it is finding the right times and maximising your chances around those times. Um, or if you're young enough and fit enough, you go for the full slog and do the full days and keep rebaiting. But, um, you know, it's not for me. I prefer to pick my times and make the, <laughs> take my chances when they come. <laughs> yeah, so over the years, the fishing's changed and the times that I could fish and, and the gear that I was using, you know, going from sort of carrying loads of gear to traveling light. But really one thing that hasn't changed in probably 20 years now is really the end tackle setup. I found a long time ago a method that worked really well on Cassian and over the years I've stuck with it and it served me well in all that time and I still use more or less the same setup today that I did all those years ago and it still works absolutely fine. The old ping pong ball, uh, I mean all that is, it, that slides up and down the line. Um, when I drop the lead, as soon as the lead hits the bottom, the ball will come up. But, uh, the rigs have changed a little bit over the years, it's all fairly basic stuff as usual. But um, I suppose, you know, the main thing is it's got to be quite strong. You know, you're fishing over quite rough terrain. So in that way, you know, I've had to keep 
fairly sort of robust tackle, sharp, you know, big hooks, and that, that hasn't changed much over the years, but a few things have. It used to be the case when you got a run on here, it, it was a mad rush to get in the boat and basically get out above the fish before it got round the snag. I mean, you can see looking around any of the bank here, it's all rocky, there's loads of tree stumps, and the line used to be in amongst all of that. And putting the poly ball on the line, what that does, no matter how much you tighten down the line, that ball is still raised a certain amount off the bottom. And fishing with a slack bait runner, when you get a run, the fish tends to rise up a little bit off the bottom and the ball rises up behind it. So it keeps the line up away from all danger. And actually what I found, it actually helped to let the fish run a bit. You can actually relax a little bit more. And the more the fish runs, the more the line rises up. So, you know, it just helps all round. It's, it's, it's been one of the biggest helps in landing more fish on Cassian out of everything. It's just a simple little ball on the line. Um, now you see it's a big lead and you know, there is a reason for that. One, I'm using braided main line and well, we've had some very strong winds and if you're fishing on little ledges, little drop-offs, you need that to hold exactly where it is. You know, if it moves a little bit, you probably end up in a snag. Um, so it needs to stay where it is, so that's one reason. The other reason is, with the poly ball on the line, they're quite buoyant. That'll probably hold a one and a half, two ounce lead up off the bottom. So you've got to add that into the equation with the rig, that if you're using a lead as a bolt effect, you're going to have to up that by two ounces to counter at the, the buoyancy of the ball. So, you know, instead of a four or five ounce lead, you know, I've got an eight ounce tractor lead. So, you know, it might look a bit crude, but everything's actually done for a reason. Um, and like I say, I'm using braided main line, and I do on here, you know, all of these big waters, I do find braid actually a lot easier, a lot more practical than mono. But it is crystal clear water, so I don't really want a line of braid going straight down to the rig. So I've got the Diffusion Camo Leader and this is the three quarter metre length. You know, they, they come in one and a half metres, um, but that just adds a bit of sort of transparency down at the rig end. Uh, yeah, and a bit of confidence and it's also nice and thick so it adds, adds as a bit of a, a shock absorber and, and leader around the rough stuff as well. Um, size 4 Fang Uni, uh, 25 pound combi link coated. That's a pretty much standard wherever I go in the world, really. And you know, it's nice and strong, presents a rig nicely. Uh, yeah, and simple as that, little snowman. It's a bit, a little bit mix and match here. I've got a Scopex squid pop up on there and it's actually a, a stabilized key bottom bait. And you know, I like both of those. You know, I'm a big fan of both of them baits, the key and the uh, Scopex squids. Uh, and I don't mind mix and matching. You know, some people say, you know, don't you mind sort of shouldn't you have just one bait if you're putting scopex out or whatever nah you know it's food if the fish are in there feeding that'll do the job nicely hopefully it will anyway <laughs> because they're all ready to go out and it looks lovely out there so uh yeah they're ready to go let's get them out there Yeah, of course today, you know, it's, it's just me sat in front of the camera, but um, over the years, over all those years, of course, it's very much been a partnership with, with me and, and Joan. You know, Joan loves Cassian as much as what I do, and we've spent all those years, all those long drives, all those long sessions, you know, on the bank together, basically, because we, we both love it. And, you know, that's sort of what's made it very special. Um, you know, 18 Christmas days we spent together and waking up uh, Christmas morning, you know, with our presents, we take all our presents and everything with us to uh, to open up, you know, and it's, when people say, what's special about Cassian? Well, it's, you know, that goes a long way to making it very special. The fact that we can share it between us. It, it's not me having to persuade her or vice versa. We both want to be there. You know, she, she's loved it as much as me, even when she's not fishing. If I've got a fish in the middle of the night, freezing cold, she'd be out there head torch on waiting for me to come back and see what it is. You know, she's excited about it. 
And of course, you know, I know I've caught some lovely carp over the years, but but Jonez as well, you know, she doesn't have the rods out as much as me. You know, I was keen as always, but but Jones had a, a fair share of uh, good Cassian fish over the years. You know, and it, in particular, there was there was one very special fish that I think it was the winter of 2002 when she caught that. Yeah, well, over all of these years. Um, between us we've managed to have 60s from all three arms I suppose <laughs> I mean not many but you know that's how it's worked out the original one was in 1987 and that was my first real big fish uh, second time here and that was right at the top of the west arm in the spawning bay but of course in the south arm was this lady here <laughs> and uh, yeah that was it was one of our winter sessions right up the top end of the south arm yeah. I just gone off at night across to see got, Philippe. Yeah. And you know it was on my it was on Joan's rod, it wasn't on my rod. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, well I washed me I washed me hair, I thought it was nice, it was nice so I washed me yeah. And I sat there, I thought I'll have a bit read. And then it the, the it just went off and I thought, oh so I threw the book down, picked it up. And in that swim there was a lot of little bushes and little trees, you know, the um the birch trees that there. And it, it had gone through that, it, all through the back of there. I managed to get it through, and when eventually I, thought, I got the, uh, the net and netted the fish there. I thought, oh, yeah, and I'm sort of looking to see where he is, if he's coming back, and he hadn't. So I thought, oh, right. So the boat was at the side, the other boat was at the side. So I just left it in the net and waited until he came back. Yeah, I was only gone about 45 minutes, yeah, and yeah. funny, as I was rowing back across, <laughs> from the other side of the arm, you know, you always look for the rods and the lines and I thought, yeah, there's one gone, she's had a fish. And uh, as I got back, she said, I've had one. And I looked in and out, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, it was like, that's not just one, that's a big one. Yeah, and sure enough, 60 and a quarter it was. Yeah, and no, I didn't know it was, at the time, it was a lady, you know, a, yeah. unofficial, obviously, ladies' world record, but yeah, sure enough, it, it was. So, there we go, the first woman to catch a 60-pound carp anywhere in the world. It seems amazing that it's over half my life ago when I first got in that little car and went down there but you know all these years later it's still very special and you know when, when I started going there in the early days I just thought there'd be loads more Cassians out there you know we'd find another lake that was very special and, and so on and so on but there, there wasn't another Cassian there isn't another Cassian you know, all these years later you know, I do get lots of offers and I've, I've been to some fabulous places all around the world. Loads of beautiful places, but none of them are Cassian. It's been 31 years now. You know, I still look forward to every trip. Every trip gives me butterflies, it really does. And, you know, I, I want to be going there in another 30 years. It's it's. One place, no matter what happens, in that 30 years, I've, I've missed two years. So I've been there a lot. I've had a lot of trips there. But you'd never get enough of Cassie. And once you've been there, you just always want more. And I certainly always want more of Cassie. And you know, I look forward to the next trip. And I look forward to years ahead of as much as I can get there, I want to be there. I just love Cassie. And for me, it's the best and always will be.
Brilliant. Job done.